Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Global Education's Virtual Expo. Um, it's just gone past 7.30 and we know we've got quite a few people that are still signing up in the waiting area. So we're just gonna let them sign in in the next couple of seconds. And um, we're really excited again today. This is, um, I think it's the third or fourth webinar that we've done with Loughborough University. And we've got Alicia back with us again. This webinar is going to be a good general overview for you to see and learn a little bit more about Lofra. And um, I want you to take the time to please write down any questions, put them in the chat or Q&A box. We'll get to them at the end of the presentation. And if there's no questions and you're happy with that, please do get in touch with us to have that one-to-one -one conversation with us. Um, and especially with Alicia, she's been great to deal with helping all our students identify what's good for them. And even if Lofra is not good for you at the same time, you know, that's the key thing to take away from this is the care and the support nature that you do get from this university. Um, so without further ado, my name is George. I work for Global Education. Uh, we counsel students and we are here to help and support you. So Alicia, the floor is yours. Thank you, that's lovely. That's um, such a fantastic introduction. Thanks George for that. Um, so yes, just to uh, reiterate for you guys, my name is Alicia Butterfield and uh, I'm Regional Manager for Loughborough University. Um, Loughborough is one of the top ranked schools of the UK and um, we're very proud to be one of the top set. But I have to um, explain a little bit about Loughborough and first of all starting with a caveat about this university um, that I am a Loughborough graduate so I'm extremely biased when it comes to my viewpoint about Loughborough and why it's special. Um, it really is a special institution so um, that's my disclaimer at the start of this presentation. Um, what I will do is go through the reasons why Loughborough stands out as an institution in the UK for you to study at, um, but also I'm going to give you some insights into the kind of programmes that we offer. And this isn't just a, a, a presentation about the information you can find on our website. Um, you can go to the website, you can find out lots of details there. But what I'm trying to do in this talk today is give you a flavour of what Loughborough University is like. Yes, we've won lots of awards. Um, but why have we won those awards? So that's the crux of the matter. So we're celebrating big time again this year. Um, we were uh, University of the Year again in 2020. And this is the fifth time that we've won this accolade as an institution. But why does Loughborough keep getting these amazing um, accolades and, and winning these awards? Part of it is because of our campus. So this is our main Loughborough campus. And as you can see, it's very green. It's, it's actually a countryside campus located between three major cities, Derby, Nottingham and Leicester. Um, and it's the largest single site campus in the UK. So 436 acres um, of university institution, making up lots and lots of sports fields as well. So if you, any of you listening are into sport, I'll explain in, in a little while why Loughborough should be top of your list. But as you can see, it's a very... Um, sort of spread out university in terms of the campus and in terms of the space that we have but at the same time all of your lectures your classes your cafe restaurant shops um, club student union sport facilities everything is in the same campus you don't need to find your way around from one part of a city to another part of a city when it comes to our London campus we have a second site in London and that's six minutes from central London by the bullet train so it's very very close to central London and that is a section of that building that you can see at the front here called the Here East Building. Um, and that's on the site of the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. So it's an exceptional venue for Loughborough to have a foothold um, right near our capital city in the UK. Just a quick visual so you know exactly where we are. Um, this is showing where we're both uh, located, both campuses. And we're, uh, Loughborough itself is, is about one hour, 20 minutes from London by train, one hour, 10 by the fast train. Um, so really nice and central, and that's, uh, I'm sure coming from South Africa, most of you will realise that nothing in the UK is very far from anything else, relatively, um, but still, we're, we're nice and conveniently placed right in the very heart of the UK. So what makes us unique? Um, well, we've won lots of different awards. I mentioned that we've won University of the Year um, a number of times. We are ranked number seven in all of the UK major rankings. So some of you might have heard my, my presentation about how UK rankings work. Basically, they'll look at criteria which are measurable. So things like how many students get a first class degree, um, what grades we accept a student into our university with, how many staff to student ratio there is, um, how much investments there is monetarily on campus. So how much money are we pumping into facilities, that type of thing. Um, and all those major rankings, 
our newspaper rankings, The Guardian, The Complete University Guide, um, and The Times University rankings, those rankings all put slightly different weightings of importance. So for example, for The Guardian, student satisfaction has a bigger percentage weighting um, when it comes to their final um, ranking of a university. For, um, for The Times, the bigger weighting is on research output. But actually, with Loughborough being seventh in all of those, um, even in the table of tables, we're also seventh, it shows actually Loughborough is good consistently across student experience, um, research output, st um, staff and student ratio, uh, what grades students come in with. For all of those things, we're very consistent. And we've been inside the top 10 for the last 15 years. So what you're looking at here is a really solid performance from this university in the last few years. Um, speaking of solid performance, we are number one in the world for sport related subjects. And we've been for the last five years, ever since 2017 in the QS World Rankings. So very, very strong university for sports. That's probably part of the reason why we've won the Times Higher Education Best Student Experience Award eight times since 2008, more than any other university. And then we've got a few other accolades as well. But most important for you guys, we offer placements for all of our undergraduate programmes. So if you are an undergraduate student thinking of studying in the UK, whether you're studying fine arts or civil engineering um, or automotive engineering or any subject, social sciences, you will get the opportunity of a paid work placement in industry and that will have a professional accreditation with it as well. We also offer internships for our MBA students and we offer a collaborative work-based project for our London students as well. So it's very heavily geared towards getting that work experience. Those are the things on paper um, which you will read about and we'll shout those things from the rooftops, which is fine. These are the things which I think make Loughborough a little bit different. Um, so first and foremost, we're a very, very inexpensive place to live. It's a low cost of living in Loughborough. And the reason for that is that it's, as I said, not a city, it's a town. Um, it doesn't mean that it's boring and there's nothing to do. It just means that we have a slightly lower cost of living because as soon as you move to a big city, thing, prices go up. The university consistently goes above and beyond in, in so many different departments and so many different ways. So in the last 18 months, obviously, uh, we've had to keep an extra close eye on our students, especially those trying to get to us at Loughborough. And then once they've arrived, um, how we conduct ourselves with our teaching, um, how we've run the university bearing COVID in mind as well. We're one of only three universities this year to have offered in-person graduation ceremonies, which were socially distanced um, and they were managed over a period of 10 days. So those were really intense, really difficult to organise, but graduation is super important. And when I say the university consistently goes above and beyond, um, we absolutely do. Even our vice chancellor was out delivering food parcels to students who had to self-isolate when the pandemic first kicked off. So the feedback I get from students after they've arrived is they spoke to somebody in accommodation and that person resolved their problem. Or they spoke to one of the wardens and the warden went out and fetched them some medicine which they couldn't get because they were self-isolating. So this is the feedback we get across the board at the university. And I hope your experience with us would be the same. Um, something else that makes us unique, we would have beaten Spain in the 2020 Olympics if we were a country. So, um, so Loughborough medals table was actually higher than some countries in the Olympics. Uh, we are partnered with two football clubs, Chelsea and West Ham. So if any of you listening are football fans, um, we do have existing partnerships with those two football clubs um, because of our, our connection with sports. And we actually made the World Cup football, um, including the one which um, was used in South Africa, which bounced around too much. Um, basically, we got into a bit of trouble for that um, because we hadn't taken into account that the air inside the ball would heat up in the South African heat. But anyway, Loughborough makes the World Cup footballs. Because we were a polytechnic, um, it means our programmes have all got very practical elements to them. And for that reason, we work with around 500 partner companies and we've got some massive, massive names of companies that we work with including the likes of Rolls-Royce, Bentley, and so on. Um, so our students stand a very high chance of getting a job after graduation. Some of those company partnerships have been around for a long time. So for example, we've been partnered with Bentley since 1910, um, the year after the university was founded. So some serious longevity when it comes to those partnerships with our, with our main companies. In terms of the courses that we offer, 
Um, I'm not going to list all of these because you can do a little bit of research. And I'm, I hope that by the time I finish my presentation, some of you will be Googling Loughborough and you'll be looking up a bit more about us. Um, but just to summarise, these are our main subject areas. It's probably easier for me to tell you what we don't offer. And what we don't offer is law and we don't have nursing um, or social work. So apart from those three areas, um, we do offer all of these programmes. Our specialisms, um, to summarise, would be engineering, business programmes, um, and then obviously sport as well. So for that reason, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview about those subjects. So engineering at Loughborough is fully accredited. It is important to have an accredited degree. If you are thinking one day of becoming a chartered engineer, or if you want to become somebody who advises their own government about engineering projects, or works on any government funded engineering projects, they're probably going to want to you to have an accredited degree programme. And that's the difference it makes. We're actually the oldest civil engineering department in the UK, just. Um, and that means that we are industry leading in the area of civil engineering. So we're looking at things like sustainable building, um, low energy building services engineering, for example, looks at how buildings can be constructed using the minimum amount of resources and energy and then how can they be super energy efficient once they're built? Um, so these are the kind of areas that we look at as part of civil engineering. We also have some specialist courses as well. Renewable energy systems technology and water engineering. In fact, Loughborough is one of the leading European centres um, for water engineering. We've got WEDEC, which is the Water Engineering Development Centre based on our campus. And that's been going for about 50 years. So. Um, very strong history with engineering. Most of our engineering subjects are within the global top 100. So we're in the, the top 100 universities in the world for our engineering subjects. Um, and what we typically look for from you as a student is good maths. That's essential. And then either physics or chemistry, depending on which, chem, which, which uh, engineering course you want to study. So as long as you've got good maths underpinning everything, that's fine. And then we'll select either physics or chemistry or sometimes biology um, if it's bioengineering um, would be acceptable as well. In terms of our business school, again, it's triple accredited um, and we also are supported by the Small Business Charter. Um, so, again, why does accreditation matter? Um, well, it does matter if you want to become something like a, a finance professional in some way then you can get exemptions um, from some of the CFA exam um, examinations, and that will save you money and it will save you time once you've graduated. Um, we do have specialisms in these areas that I've listed here. We also have our MBA as well, and that's the course that I studied at Loughborough. Um, and I was very lucky I was on a staff scholarship for that one. So with our um, sort of business school and economics programmes, what we tend to ask for is a strong maths background unless you're going to be studying marketing management or the MBA. Everything else will require a, a good maths background. Um, but what we're also keen to attract is students from lots of different backgrounds as well. So we're not looking for specific subjects that you've studied before. We're open-minded, as long as you've got maths competency, um, basically you can work a, an Excel spreadsheet, you can look at a balance sheet and know what you're looking at, that type of thing. Um, then we're willing to, to have students from any different background because especially with business programmes, we find that the more um, sort of vast and ranging of the experiences of our students, the better class mix that tends to produce. And we've produced some really great alumni. Um, I don't know if you guys use um, Shazam over there, but uh, it's a music identifying app that you can get. So that creator was a Loughborough graduate. Um, we've had various other um, entrepreneurs as well, including one of our own academics who, who basically created and developed um, an enzyme that meant uh, tablets could be released. Um, so when, when you take a paracetamol or something like that, it has a coating on it to stop it from being released into your stomach too quickly. She developed that special coating and layer. And Dr. Julie Holland is actually one of our academics that will be teaching students in these programmes as well about entrepreneurship and how to develop their own business ideas because she's done it and it was a multi-million pound industry. In terms of sport, exercise and health sciences, now this is probably the area where Loughborough um, is expected to really lead the way and we do, um, what with being number one in the world. So we have all these different areas um, for students to look at when it comes to sport, exercise and health sciences. This is not just sport and exercise. Um, so I know some of you might be familiar with 
studying sports sciences, for example, at university. I think it's fair to say that Loughborough takes that absolutely to the next level completely. Uh, we've been looking at things like sport biomechanics. Um, we look at things like how sport can interact with different subsets within a culture. So, for example, if you've got a group of disenfranchised youth and they're out and they're looking at joining gangs, how could sport be used to engage with those people and to bring them back in again and to give them a sense of purpose without having to go into that uh, side of life? There's a whole range of things that we do with sport and you'd be absolutely amazed if you're interested in sport on any level, um, then you'd be quite amazed at what we've got at Loughborough. And even as somebody like myself, whose interest in sport is, is passing, it's not huge. I'm actually fascinated by all this stuff as well, including our sport technology unit, uh, where we've developed everything from the Olympic swimwear um, for Team GB, right the way through to the Olympic uh, Paralympic wheelchairs that they use for um, basketball in the Paralympics. So really, really strong on sport exercise health sciences. If you're interested in these subjects, because we're number one in the world, we're probably less flexible than we are in other departments. So if you haven't met the entry criteria for these courses, come and talk to me. I can maybe advise you about a different course. It might be in a slightly different department. We'll still have sport as underpinning some of the teaching and learning. But this is one of the departments that sticks to their entry criteria quite closely um, because we get a lot of applications for every single space available. For our London campus, we offer programmes which are very different from the Loughborough campus. So we're not offering all, all programmes in the same place. These are postgraduate programmes only, and they relate to those subjects which are listed there. So these are the institutes which are at our London campus. As I said, they're not offered at Loughborough as well. These are specific to London. And um, for South African students, most of the inquiries I get are either for the Diplomacy and International Governance Institute or for digital technology. Um, but we have had a couple of media and creative, creative industries inquiries as well. So, again, if you're interested in these topics, um, London campus is very fresh in its outlook. It involves a three month um, collaborative project, which you'll do as part of your degree, collaborating with one of our industry partners. And that could be paid. That can also lead to a full time job. I've known students who have started on the collaborative project with BT Sport and ended up um, staying with BT Sports and that student's now been with them for six years. Um, so there are opportunities that can come out to that collaborative project, which can be really constructive for you. Uh, these are my classmates and I uh, graduating from the MBA. Um, if there are any MBA students listening to this, it is our most expensive programme at Loughborough, but we do have some fantastic scholarships based on your work experience. You would need to have at least three years of managerial work experience to do our MBA because it's accredited. And we only have 50 students per year. So this programme for us is, is not so much about generating revenue. Otherwise, we would fill it with 200 people um, and we would basically just get people in and, uh, and have the MBA be like a process. It's not like that at all. It's taught by industry specialists. It's very relaxed. And what I really loved about it is that it's not a, what I describe a suited and booted uh, MBA programme where it's really official and formal. It was much more down to earth than that really practical we worked on live projects um, and we had to basically support people with their actual business issues some of those issues were huge so we had one um, gentleman who came in for our assistance and basically he was facing bankruptcy unless his business turned around so it is a live project it's quite nerve-wracking but absolutely the best experience um, so far and then for some of you, you might be looking at phd um, we do offer phd opportunities at loughborough how you are funded will determine how you apply for your PhD. So I won't, um, I won't go into loads, loads of detail about that right now, but if there are any PhD students listening to this, um, then we can obviously engage with you and I can advise you one-to-one -one about what to do to apply for your PhD. In terms of career and employability, uh, Loughborough, again, is very, very strong in this area. We hold one of the UK's largest annual career fairs with around 500 companies attending. Um, and we, we've been very, very strong for um, graduate employability rankings as well. We offer careers advice up to three years after you've graduated. So again, this is one of the ways we show you that Loughborough is different from other universities. You don't graduate and then we cut the cord and then that's that, you've gone, you're not our responsibility. We still engage with you up to three years after you left us 
to try and facilitate with you getting the kind of job that you want. Um, we have industry-based dissertations. Um, students, as I said, in, in your undergraduate studies, you can study for a year, sorry, study for two years, do a one-year work placement, and then come back for your final year. And if you do that work placement, first of all, you get paid. Secondly, you don't pay the full tuition fee. You only pay 20% of your normal tuition fee. And thirdly, you get a professional qualification called a DPS, a Diploma of Professional Studies. So it makes you really strong and attractive to future employers. If you've got a year with Jaguar Land Rover on your CV, um, that will speak volumes and you can get promoted within the company during that time. This is a bit about Loughborough Sport then. I thought you might be interested to see some of our old photos. Um, so top left there, that's our swimming pool. And for any of you who have visited the UK, you'll know how cold it is. Um, so you know how tough those early swimmers must have been in order to, under, to undergo an open air swimming pool in the UK. Um, but the university actually started as a, as a training centre um, for officers just before the First World War. And we've undergone such a transition during that time with sports being such a huge part of everything that we do at Loughborough, that we're now in a position that, as I said, we've got a campus based on the site of the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. So that's on our modern swimming pool there, bottom right. Um, you've got our two rugby teams there. One of those photos was taken in about 20, uh, sorry, 1919 rugby team. The other one is our 2019 rugby team. Um, and we also have, of course, now women's rugby as well. So there's been a development of sport throughout Loughborough's life cycle, which has just really solidified who we are and, and the kind of ethos that we have. Um, we've been the Bucks champions, so the British University and Colleges champions for 40 years, and it's, that competition has only run for 40 years, so we've won it every year. Um, we would have been 16th in the Olympics, and we got 30 medals in the Commonwealth Games. And when you graduate from Loughborough, you'll shake the hands of Lord, Lord Sebastian Coe, He's the university chancellor and he's also president of the World Athletics Association. So he was out in Tokyo um, trying to deal with the Simone Biles kickoff that, ev that everyone's getting unhappy about. So I don't envy him that job, but that's our chancellor and he's a fantastic ambassador for the university. His heart and his mind is really in the right place when it comes to promoting Loughborough and the kind of university that we are. So let's get down to the brass tacks. I wanted to give you an overview of Loughborough's costs so that you have an idea about where you'd stand. What I would ask of you, it's very easy to look at Loughborough's fees and some of you might be looking at them and thinking, wow, this is a relatively high cost. Yes, it is, um, because Loughborough's at the top of the ranking spectrum as well as the top of the fee spectrum. But please do your full research when you're doing your university research. And um, what I've done here is broken it down. So University A at the bottom there on the bottom left, that has tuition fees which are much lower than Loughborough's. They offer a scholarship to every student. Um, if they apply to that university, they will get £2,000 off. So really, their tuition fee is actually £15,500. However, this university is located just on the outskirts of London, and rent in that area is about £8,000 per year. Plus, you have your food costs, and I haven't added it in here because I wasn't sure how much it would be, but you'd also have travel costs as well. So you'd have to pay for a tube train to get from A to B. You'd have to find your classes around the city as well. Loughborough, on the other hand, has high tuition fees. We do offer scholarships um, to our students based on merit. We don't offer them to everybody. We look at your grades and we assess what scholarship you get after that. But our rent is much, much lower and our food costs are much lower. And you don't have any travel costs because everything is on the campus that you'll need. And of course, if you want to go to Nottingham or you want to go to London for a day out, that's absolutely fine, but it won't cost you very much to do that. So actually, by the time you finished, there isn't much difference between the two. So please, when you're doing your university research, do your full research and make sure you take into account your living cost and all the other expected costs as well. In terms of scholarships, what I get asked a lot is what kind of sports scholarships do you offer? Um, Loughborough as a sports university, we, we do offer some sports scholarships up to about £3,000, but our bigger scholarships are the 25% scholarships for merit-based awards for undergraduates. And again, for postgrad students, you've got 20% if you had a first class in your bachelor degree or 10% if you've got a second class upper. But if you're an undergraduate and you're applying to Loughborough and we say to you, right, for your course, you need to get 77666 in the matric. Um, 
But if you exceed that, if you get four sevens and a six, then you can get the 25% scholarship. So we'll be very clear with you what it is you need to get before you arrive. Um, and that will be part of your offer that you see from Loughborough. In terms of sports scholarships, we don't tend to offer a huge amount of monetary support at this stage. However, once you arrive at Loughborough, if you are an elite athlete, so if you're part of our sport and development team, um, then what you'll get is basically added benefits. So you have free coaching, free strength and conditioning coaching, free gym access. We pay for your kit, which can be very expensive. So we will cover the cost of that. Any physio requirements that you have, we will cover that as well. Um, and things like sport massage, sport nutritionist, um, all of that stuff is taken care of. So actually the package that Loughborough offers is probably in excess of any other UK university, but our initial monetary scholarship is not. Um, and that's, that's how we operate. So I hope that covers some of the details about scholarships. In terms of rooms, we're, we're a massive university as you saw at the beginning. So we have 7,000 rooms available for students. Um, you can also, of course, live off campus if you want to. I'm not going to labour the point about accommodation. It's all there on the website. And to be honest, any university in the UK is going to be very standard with their accommodation rooms. They're going to be of a good standard. Um, they won't let you suffer somewhere horrible like they used to back in the day um, when before student satisfaction started being something that was measured more closely. Um, so I'll let you do a bit of research about the accommodation, but essentially lots of rooms available at Loughborough. And then lots of societies too. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, actually, I'm, I'm not really into sport. It's not my thing. That's fine. Um, we are a sports university, but we're not some we're not a place that would make somebody not feel included ever. Um, so there's lots of different societies you can join. There's lots of different groups to be part of. Or you don't have to join any of them um, if you'd prefer not to. That's absolutely fine as well. And as somebody who's not sporty, I can definitely vouch that I was made to feel very welcome at Loughborough. And I had a go at sports I would never have given a try before. Um, I wasn't very good at them. And what I noticed is that I still got a round of applause, even though I, I kind of sucked at some of those sports um, in different areas. So that's the kind of university we are. Um, I hope that this has been a good overview for you. My contact details are there, but I'd really encourage you to connect with the um, organizers of today um, connect with global education and talk to their counsellors because they do know us very well and they'll be able to give you an overview of what kind of institution we are and whether or not they feel Loughborough would be a good fit for you and that's a very important thing to take into account so thank you so much for your time um, and I'm now prepared to take any questions Lisa, if there are any. Thank you very much for that it was as always um, very eloquently put and um, broadcasted to everybody on what on who is Loughborough. I know I get a lot of questions on who is Loughborough and what do they do and you know I mentioned sports university and it's so much more than that. I mean the one thing I wanted to ask you is the types of the lecture classrooms and how does that not only differ from other universities but how but but what makes Loughborough it's, it's unique with its lectures. Uh, you mean the actual sort of facilities and things like that? So, yes, yeah, OK, so I think um, it's probably the mixture of facilities that we have access to. And that comes from how much space we've got. So 430 acres, we've got everything from a 20 million pound STEM lab, um, which is for electronic and computer science students to actually get in there and, and get hands on with the kit. Um, in civil engineering, we have an actual we have a concrete warehouse. Uh, doesn't sound very exciting, but basically, if you want to test how strong concrete is, they've got these massive pneumatic drills and you will apply pressure directly on top of concrete that you've made and you will see where it uh, starts to buckle. So that's brilliant fun, even for a non-civil engineer. Um, you know, you can press the button on the machine and just put some pressure on the concrete and they let me have a go. So that, that was great. Um, so there's real hands on stuff going on. We've got an anechoic chamber um, down in the um, aeronautical engineering department. So anechoic just means there's no reverb. If you want to check how a plane will land um, with some new aerodynamic technology on board, then you can put it in the anechoic chamber and simulate a plane landing. And it's full size. You can fit cars inside it. It's massive. Um, so those are the types of facilities we have. And then on top of that, of course, we've got the lecture halls. Um, some will be flat set out rooms like seminar rooms. Most of them are like a theatre set out and some of them can seat up to 400 people. Um, because of COVID, of course, we're socially distancing. So what Loughborough did very, very quickly um, when everything started to kick off last year 
was introduce social distancing measures and we assigned our larger lecture halls so that we could continue face-to-face -face teaching um, and socially distance at the same time. So yeah, that's the kind of setup that we have. Brilliant. And then um, I've got a question that's come through from a student here from Jordan. Jordan, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Um, Jordan's asking, do you offer medicine? Um, so this is, I'm sorry, this is gonna be a, an answer that doesn't, um, it goes around the houses, Jordan, sorry about this. We don't offer medicine if you want to be a surgeon. If you would like to be a doctor, like a medical doctor, then you would, with us, you would take biological sciences, um, which is a four year program because it's part of sport exercise health science, and that's number one in the world um, as a department, then um, you can become a medical doctor if you take biological sciences at Loughborough. So you do a four year biosciences degree. One of those would be a year in a, a, an industry setting. So it might be a heart, lung or cancer clinic. And then you'd go on to do your postgraduate studies in medicine as well. And that would also include another year of um, basically on the job training. So um, not, a, not a long path, you know, not a, a long path like an eight year medical degree, but you'd have to do it in two stages, do your bachelor's first and then do your postgrad medicine. Absolutely. And Jordan, please do get in touch with us. Um, I'm going to put my contact details or our contact details on the screen here for you and also send you an email after this. Um, have that one-to-one -one conversation with us so we can assess what will be good for you as well and find out a little bit more about you as well. I'm just going to put that on now. And then here we go. Alicia, i got a couple of questions that came through on our social media from people seeing the adverts. And um, a lot of the questions there were the, they were talking about the, the network and the, um, the, the career opportunities for students. And you mentioned Bentley and all these various companies that you're, um, you know, support partnered with. But in terms of the actual sort of support that students get, what does that look like? Do they go online? Do they speak with a career advisor? Um, could you go a bit more into that? I know we addressed it in the last, um, one of the first webinars that we did, um, but we'd like to address it again in this webinar. Yeah, sure. So um, there's a big problem that the career service have, basically, is that they have all these amazing services and then students um, don't always visit them. So this is my plea. And uh, basically, if you are a student listening to this, whichever university you go to, it doesn't have to be Loughborough, but they will all have a career service. Please make use of their free careers advice. Um, is my number one tip because these people are sat behind a desk waiting for students to walk in they'll run webinar workshops of how to do um, a group interview for example so at Loughborough we had something called Hell Day which is a simulation of a K K KPMG group interview setting so they basically gave our students a psychometric test a written exam um, a one-to-one -one interview a presentation and then it was the group interview as well and that was just the morning so by the time everyone's stomach's rumbling and they're, you know, exhausted from it all, then they get their feedback about how they did in a group interview setting for a major firm like KPMG. Um, so that's the kind of thing we run all the time. And, and usually that would be chargeable um, to have that kind of experience, but the university does it all for free. So you, yes, you can go in and talk to a careers advisor. Um, you can also talk to your academics. You've got a personal tutor. You could say to them, how did they get on in there? Um, previous experience because most of them have come from industry they're not all academics have just stayed in academia if you dig back into their past you'll see that they've been out there working so ask them how they found it in the sector why did they switch to becoming an academic that type of thing um, and also come to the careers events so as I said these these were virtual last year but we're hoping that they're going to be face to face um, for this year going forward and this is where we have 500 firms coming to Loughborough campus um, it is the likes of Apple um, and Deutsche Bank um, and Goldman Sachs and everybody else. So these are, again, massive names. And often they'll be represented by somebody who is a Loughborough graduate who's now come back onto campus and instructed, find someone like you were 15 or 10 years ago. So there are all these different events um, available. But if you do just want to sit down and have a chat with somebody, that option is available as well. Um, but my advice would be go for one of the structured events. So for example, we'll do a CV uh, building workshop. That's a good place to start. If there is a practice day, like the group interview, um, I had students come out of that saying that was horrific. Um, the worst experience that they've ever had. And I was like, oh no, this is not gonna you know, bode well for the university experience. Um, but then one of my students landed a job at Goldman Sachs 
and she had a group interview um, for that job and her starting salary was £44,000. That's double wow. the national average <laughs> for a starting salary for a graduate. So group interview practice works because if you're shy um, or if you're somebody who doesn't know how to perhaps present themselves to your full advantage, it's really easy to make a stupid mistake in a group interview. And that starts with where do you sit when you first go in? Everyone's trying to sit front centre because they think that shows that they're an alpha and they're the leader. And, well, um, and actually, we've got some top tips about how to not fall into those traps. And that's the kind of thing you'll get through practice. So do make use of it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm imploring to all students and I can really take that advice. It's my, my biggest regret in my degree was not taking full advantage of those supports. And they're free. And you know, when you look at the cost of Loughborough and you compare that cost to other universities, yes, slightly more, slightly more expensive in some cases. But then you look at the cost benefit analysis and then look at the investment that you're putting into yourself with you know, these types of services. And you know, it really gets your bang for your buck, as they say in South Africa. You know, it's it really is worth exploring. And um, any student that is interested, I will share Alicia's um, contact details with you so you can have those one to one conversations with her and completely away from us and and see the difference in those conversations compared to other research universities. Um, so please do take that time. Um, <laughs> if it needs to you got any more questions, please put them in the chat box in the Q&A section. I know we've got a few people on here and a few dropped out. But don't worry, we will share the recording. And Alicia, some of the other questions that I keep getting are a little bit more, <laughs> more on what's happening now for your current students. Um, you know, a lot of the, the youngsters that we're talking to, 16, 17, 18 year olds, are starting to investigate what they want to study. Um, they always ask us, what happened now with the pandemic? Are students arriving in September? Um, how are they finding? Are they quarantining? Um, could you just explain a little bit on that? Yeah, so um, I mean, obviously, we're, we're working within government guidelines, but I think, again, we're, we're going above and beyond on that. So um, one thing we could do is always link students up to somebody who came last year. That's probably the easiest way for you to hear from the horse's mouth about what kind of experience they had. Um, but for example, at Loughborough, we did 600 loads of laundry um, during the quarantine period. So not as personally, we had a laundry service came in, um, but students who were self-isolating um, left their laundry bundles out and that got done for them. We delivered food three times a day to somebody who's self-isolating as well. Um, we have our own app on campus. It's called Connect and Protect. So if you download the app, if you've come into contact with somebody who then later on tests positive, you'll be the first one to know about it and you can go and get yourself a free test. We have a testing site on campus and we have a vaccination site on campus and it's all free. Um, so I think we've made it as easy as possible. In terms of what teaching looks like, it's, um, it has been online. Um, it's been what they call blended learning. So that's a new phrase that we've all learned this year. Um, nobody even knew it existed before that, really. Um, but this year, we now know what it is. Blended learning is basically some of your seminars will be face to face where there's a small enough group of you and you can stay far, far enough apart from each other. Um, but some lectures will also be online as well. So say, for example, you're in a marketing lecture there's 200 marketing students in that particular module. Um, you're going to obviously not be in the same room crammed in like sardines. So we'll put it online, but it's live. I know some universities pre-record their lectures and you sit down and you press play. And that's not the same um, as being able to ask questions and things like we are doing now. So these are live sessions that we have with our academics, even if they are online. Um, but for the most part, we're going back to face-to-face -face learning wherever possible. Yeah. Just going to have a quick squiz of any few questions that have come through here. And as always, it's the presentations that, that you know, cover everything that gets the least amount. <laughs> it's amazing. David, raise his hand. David, would you like to speak directly to us, David? We can give you the voice if you'd like. Sorry. Was Maybe in the Q&A. Cool, I'll just give you, there we go. <laughs> David, you should be able Hello. to speak. Yes, how's it, how are you? Hello. Oh, good, David, <laughs> nice to meet you. Right, as you can see, I, I don't look, uh, I look like a very old student. I'm actually phoning just um, uh, 
in connection with my son, who's, who's studying uh, business science at, at UCT, he's still doing his undergrad. I'm just wondering um, whether Loughborough University offers uh, honours or master's programmes in, in, in business studies or business science, but he is very interested in organisational psychology, so I think his stream might end up going more that way. At the moment, it's quite wide, economic, maths, business, psychology, but I can see him going and possibly organisational psychology stream. Okay. Yes, I mean, uh, so... Yeah, there's a couple of, um, so first of all, thank you for, for joining us. I think there's a couple of routes that he could go down. So one of them would be a general management MSc. Um, mm. And in management, he'll cover anything management, including organisational culture and organisational um, psychology, things like that. Or he could specialise in human resource management, um, and in which case it will be more of that topic will be within that mm. subject. Um, or at Loughborough, we have MSc Work Psychology. And for MSc Work Psychology, they'll cover everything from how the company thinks to yeah. how the individuals within the company think. Um, but he will get the option of other modules as well. So each of our programmes has got a module list on the website, um, which, which is um, published. When, when is he graduating from? Yeah, look, that'll only be, it's a four-year programme, so you should only finish in, you know, it's still a couple of years to go. Um, and then maybe he should do honours and, you know, so I suppose it's still early days, but I'm just looking ahead. He, know, he would need yeah. to do a full honours degree. So yeah. for, yeah, for, for most of the, I'd say the top 25 universities in the UK, it would need yeah. to be full honours um, yeah. mm. to come. And then typically a second class upper for most of those yeah. programmes. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to the specialisation, he decides what he does his dissertation on. So if right. he wants to look specifically at, you know, cultural um disparity between two different types of organization he could yeah. do that um it will be entirely up to him with his personal tutor advising him sounds very interesting thank you very much i appreciate that that's that's the area that i covered in my mba by the way <laughs> so oh, fantastic oh wonderful <laughs> yeah look it's still early days i mean who knows you know um where where the youngsters are, are going to go there's so many different avenues and opportunities these days compared to 30 years ago so but yeah, yeah and I see I got a message here on the chat as well. Thank yes. you. For that. Um, yeah. All good, David. Um, I'll get you in touch with Ashley, who's actually on this webinar listening, and she runs the Cape Town office. And okay. um, a lot of students that are in your son's predicament that are graduating in three or four years' time, and mm. we help them from right now. So we sort of are always there for sort of guiding in, in certain levels and support. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers. It's good, it's good to start early as well. I think, um, oh, you know, it, yeah. it, it, everything goes so fast, you know, you, before I know it, he'll be, he'll be finished. It, it is. And also, if he could, if he's selecting his modules to study now, then mm. he can start to steer and find out what he likes and what he doesn't like. And yeah. if, if he decides it is going to be work psychology, we'd want to see quite a high number of um, quantitative modules and things as part of his degree now. So that might help okay. him out to know. I understand. Yeah. Thank you, Alicia. Cheers, David. Have a good Great. Thanks. You can mute me now. And <laughs> <laughs> um, David, if you are listening in on this, we did a presentation last night on the future of work. Um, uh, I will send that recording to you as well. It is worth listening into. And it's, I think Alicia, you hit the nail on the head there, you know, starting your course from now and understanding where you're going to go, the types of courses you need to do in the grades. It's so more important now than, than ever before, and especially with the competitive nature with work and, and trying to find work. Um, you know, I, I think it's worth, worth exploring. Um, Alicia, just on that front, in terms of the future and where Loughborough is going, um, do you see a clear movement into the STEM sort of world and courses and things like that? Or are you seeing a sort of more creative side of things coming through? We're just curious what your perception is on that. You mean sort of globally or for, or for Loughborough? Or for Loughborough specifically? Um, do you know what, we're, we're a funny one because we're, we're very polarised. So we, we started out as an engineering school and we're really strong for engineering. It's what we're best known for, certainly in, in parts of West Africa, for example, everyone just thinks Loughborough engineering. But actually, we're also fit in the UK for art and design. So um, we're a funny one. And for media and global communications, we're actually in the global top 40, which is one of our highest ratings. So... Um, we really sort of cover these vastly different topics. Um, 
In terms of how it goes, I think the focus for Loughborough for STEM is as it has been for the last 30 odd years, which is female representation in STEM subjects. Um, so we're still working on that. We, we have one of the better ratios male to female students for STEM subjects in the UK, but there's still plenty of um, headroom in terms of levelling that up more and more. So um, it's about a 60-40 split, which apparently is good, um, but I think there's more that the university is trying to do around that. Um, we are strong on sciences, physical sciences, geography and physics, maths and that type of area because of our background with engineering. Um, so I think for us, I think Loughborough is holding steady with those strengths. Our challenge is that I think Loughborough's mindset is still that we're a, a good middling university, but that's not been the case for the last 20 years. We're now an elite university. But I, I think it's one of the things I actually like about the uni is that we don't think of ourselves as being um in the sort of competitor set that perhaps we are now um and we don't put too much pressure on ourselves to to maintain that because actually if we carry on focusing on the right stuff then hopefully we'll maintain that as a natural course anyway um in terms of how things are going globally we're seeing a huge um switch in interest now so the, the water engineering courses that we've been running for years and years um are now seeming relevant in a way that perhaps they haven't before with younger students coming through so uh, don't hold me to this, and I hope I'm not saying anything out of turn, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an undergraduate water engineering programme um, that came along before too long. Um, certainly things like sustainable development, sustainable engineering, um, renewable energy systems, climate crisis management. So that's a new programme for our geography department is climate management and um, uh, climate control. Those two areas are ones where students are suddenly really um, sitting up and looking to study those and I think there's going to be investment from governments and funding going that way and there'll be jobs in those sectors as well um, so just as we saw a massive spike in digital technologies and cyber security about five or six years ago um, I think the next spike um, is probably going to be in the area of climate control and crisis management mm. what's uh, your money on George Oh, uh, I'm from the logistics of the world and maritime and shipping, and then and it's definitely an area that I've seen sort of explode in the last couple of years. Um, you know, as much as I'm also in the marketing world and seeing, you know, the, <laughs> the media and the news sort of escalate in terms of the amount, amount of production and media that's coming through with climate, I definitely think it's at the tip of our tongues, and especially coming from Africa, where we see it firsthand more than, you know, some other places in the world, uh, you know, the varying droughts and floods and, you know, I definitely see that coming through from global education's perspective, we're seeing a lot of students um, asking for advice and support in those areas, but not just that, the psychology, behavioral studies, you're still getting a lot of interest in those because I think you can't have one without the other, you know, you still got the human element that needs the care and nature and it's great to see that still coming through. So it's kind of more general from what we're seeing, um, but definitely an increase in inquiries in those types of courses. So it's great to see you you saying that as well. Um, You're right. And actually on that point, it's not, as you rightly say, it's not just the physical and engineering side of it as well. We've also got climate change and social policy as one of our master's programs. So it is the human element of it as well. It seems to be filtering into every program in some kind of respect, which is, is how it should be. If someone's looking at marketing, then sustainable marketing management should be part of that process as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, one thing I did want to mention to people listening onto this, please Google the, the chancellor. Um, I actually had no idea about him until the very first time I met Alice and um, you know we had our first introduction about Loughborough and I was pleasantly surprised is probably not the right word to use, but I think inspired was another one, an amazing story um, and worth looking into. So I do um, suggest you just Google him and, and have a look. Um, it's an incredible right. background. Putting his name into the chat now. He's a lovely guy as well. He's um, he's really good humoured. Um, one of the, this, I'll, I'll tell a quick anecdote about it. We were doing the graduations and there's a television gardener in the UK. Um, he has his own TV show about gardening programmes and he's called Alan Titchmarsh. And one of the mothers at the graduation went up to Lord Sebastian Coe, put her arm around him and said, aren't you Alan Titchmarsh? Um, <laughs> which we all sort of, no, he's, he's not. He's the chairman of the World Athletics Association. But um, it was kind of, he took it in very good faith and, and basically just incorporated it into his graduation speech. And 
and said, I'm terribly sorry to disappoint the uh, the lady earlier on, but I'm in fact not the television gardener. Um, I am in fact <laughs> Lord Co. So he's he's just humble. He's he's a pleasant guy. And I think he, he gets it as well. He comes from a humble background himself. Um, he's a Lord because of his Olympic achievements. He's not a Lord by birth. Um, so yeah, nice guy. Yeah. Um, I think one final question from me. I know it's um, dinner time in South Africa and late night, so thank you everybody for joining us. Um, what's one place when a student does accept and is on its way to Loughborough? Um, where do you where, where do you suggest that they go check out first? So sorry, just say one one place. So if they're coming to Loughborough and then they arrive. Yeah, yeah what's one place that you suggest that they should go check out first? Oh, um, it's hard because it depends, very much depends what, what are you into, um, you know, what's the student's interest. Um, South African, we're used to the outdoor sort of lifestyle, that's sort of our game as well. There's, there's an obvious tip and then there's a more subtle one. So um, the obvious one is clearly the student union um, is going to be, it's just been revamped and refurbished. So we've taken the advantage of all the lockdown um, restrictions and basically had a, a revamp of our student union. Um, so that's now... It's got different cafes, different, different restaurants. It's been repainted throughout. There's different music gigs that are going to be going on in there. Um, they've got a new sound system. They've got a new light system. So being South Africans um, and enjoying your social activities, then yes, I'd recommend going to the SU. If you are looking for something slightly different, which is a, a well-kept secret, um, then, and this is, again, I've experienced such hospitality whenever I've come to South Africa. So there is an open invitation. Um, I live about three miles from campus and I live near somewhere called Beacon Hill Country Park and this is a 36 acre of woodland and uh, massive views there's like a big valley that drops off down from it near and there's lots of quarries around that area in the distance so any students who are looking for a day out great outdoors um, country park access it's free um, and if you do want to come for a walk I'll bring my dogs and uh, any student is very welcome to join me um, we did do this last year when, when we were allowed to meet up in groups and walk outside together. Um, it was great. So students basically got, got um, that some of them actually cycled from Loughborough campus. So they cycled three miles. We did our walk and then they cycled back again. Um, and if there's time for a beer at the end of it, then so much the better. So the offer is there. And yeah, I'd recommend that. So many students don't know it exists and they're just on campus um, in the Loughborough bubble. And then they never actually go to the, the really amazing areas outside. So. Yeah, Beacon Hill is the way forward. Hopefully I can get to travel and come and visit and um, take you up on that as well. So that'll be great. Um, George, I just know you've just joined, you've, you've dropped in and out. So don't worry, I will be sending a recording to everybody that signed up for this webinar. Um, we had around 50 people, I think, in total sign up. And I know we've only got around 12 that have come on and off the webinar. So don't worry, we do know that a lot of the recordings are used much more than and joining us. So to Dave and yourself, thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Um, Alicia, thank you very much. I'm going to let you close out this webinar if you've got any last minute advice for the students that are listening in. And um, from me, from Global Education, thank you, everybody. And um, please remember, our services are completely free. Um, we do have an application fee, but that's very separate to a lot of different things that you're going to apply for. Um, so please take advantage of these consultations and all of these webinars. Um, there's no limitation on them and we've got a heavy month of webinars for you so please um, do get in touch as the floor is yours Alicia sorry the floor is yours have a lovely evening as well thank you and yeah I just want to say a big thank you um, to Global Education for the platform to engage with these students of course um, and in terms of last minute advice I think the the fact that students are still looking at traveling overseas given everything that's going on I think that's amazing and for parents who are thinking of sending their child overseas um, when I think the natural instinct is for everyone just to hunker down and go, no, no, no one's going anywhere. We're going to stay close, stay safe. I'm not having you going far off. The fact that people are still thinking about doing this major thing in your life, you're brave. It's a big, brave thing to do. Um, so do your research, make sure the university that you're going to has got you um, and that they're equipped to look after you once you get there. Um, they should be. Um, but do your research stages and, um, and basically keep on that idea of going overseas. Now that you're taking the first steps, hang in on the journey. Um, we had students who made it last year against all the odds and they're there and they're, they're thriving and they're doing just fine. So um, stick with the idea and um, credit to you for doing something that's, that's really brave. So thank you so much for your time and for listening this evening. I appreciate it.
Thanks, everybody. Good night.